The late 19th century was a time of industrial developments. The rise of the oil and steel industry, among others, changed the social and economic landscape of the country. Many now worked for a regular wage. At the head of these new industries was a new class of industrialists. Some called them captains of industry for their contributions to society, and others called them robber barons because of their oppression of the workers. Workers at the time saw these industrialists as tyrannical people sitting on piles of money which were earned by the underpaid workers. They forced their workers into long hours and little pay, on average 10 to 12 hours a day, six days a week. But at the same time, these so-called rubber barons made substantial contributions to charitable organizations, founded universities, donated to libraries, and scientific institutions. Rockefeller donated $500 million to charity. Carnegie funded the New York Public Library and what would become Carnegie Mellon University. J.P. Morgan was so wealthy that he helped bail out the government in 1895 and again in 1907. Rich industrialists did contribute to society. There was obvious backlash to these industrials having so much when the workers had so little. The way these rich industrialists justified this wealth was through the idea of social Darwinism. Social Darwinism applied the ideals of Darwin's theory of evolution to society, claiming that those in power got to the top because they were fitter. The idea was that the rich people were rich and the poor people were poor because of their abilities. Companies that were bigger than others gained the most and were justified in having a total monopoly. Now, obviously, the connections to evolution were at times stretched, but the connections were convincing to many people and justified the way things were. It is best rooted in the fallacy of appeal to nature, saying that something is good because it is the way it is. Despite the association of social Darwinism with this time period, the term social Darwinism wasn't broadly used until the 1940s, and people who believed in the ideas of social Darwinism almost never called themselves social Darwinists. One of the original proponents of social Darwinism, Herbert Spencer, said that society is a living organism and society evolves just like an organism does. Social Darwinism claimed that regulation on industry and laws to help the poor people weren't needed. Big corporations were big because they were fit, and poor people were poor because they were unfit. Social Darwinism was also a justification of racism by claiming that stronger races would surpass the weaker ones. Social Darwinism often had many definitions in direct contradiction with each other. Social Darwinism had no one political doctrine. A social Darwinist could be a proponent of laissez-faire economic policy, or just as easily, state socialism. Eugenics also emerged from the same circumstances as social Darwinism. Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton, claimed that just as physical traits are passed down from parent to child, so were mental qualities. In his view, social institutions such as welfare and insane asylums were only allowing the inferior people to survive and hold back those who were superior. Many social Darwinists often supported better salaries and working conditions as it would allow, allow the poor better chances of providing for themselves while distinguishing from the simply lazy. As time progressed, social Darwinism began to lose traction as an idea. Following World War I, social Darwinism's popularity broadly declined, and with World War II it was associated with Nazism, which along with growing scientific consensus that it was groundless, effectively put an end to the idea. Tonight on the History Channel. You might think the 1880s were all about money, but they weren't. They're about aliens, okay? Andrew Carnegie, along with other industrialists, were working with aliens. Their steel was used to produce and build skyscrapers. The skyscrapers were designed to be as tall as possible in order to serve as beacons to communicate with the mothership. The world isn't ready to attack! You never, ever, know. Oi, bruv! Social Darwinism! It's about pressing the weak! <laughs>